What does ESG say? Um, so we've seen this already about assessment. We kind of skip it because we've just done it. And then um, ESD is a treatment of choice for most esophageal squamous lesions and superficial Barrett's lesions, mainly to give an on-block resection and accurate pathologic staging. I think that's very important. ESD might be considered for non-circumferential, um, potentially initial first layer of the submucosa, 200 micrometers, um, uh, or circumferential uh, M2. So important. We talked about this before. It's important to think about the limit of ESD being uh, the deeply invasive lesion, obviously. Embarrass esophagus, EMR. So this is the thing we saw before. It's potentially for uh, visible lesions under 20. I must say this is not my practice. And I'm moving towards ESD for the majority of things uh, that are over eight or nine uh, that don't fit in a cap. Um, and uh, ESD for, okay, things for, for suspicion of submucosal invasion. Depends on your comfortableness with ESD. But again, uh, here is... Uh, the limit of ESD and deep ulceration and things with markedly elevated borders potentially should not be taken on, certainly in a curative context where the patient is not comorbid. Colon. 99.8 probably percent of colonic polyps don't need anything other than EMR. Then let's talk about the rest of them. Okay, then we need to make a decision about is it on block? If it's on block, what is it on block with? Um, I think that ESD is growing, particularly in the rectum. And so be they have uh, intramuscular dissection, you have full thickness dissection in the, in the rectum. But in the colon, you still have ESD, and ESD is difficult. So I think the indications for ESD outside of the rectum are limited, um, but of course they are. A lesion which exhibits a disordered vascular pattern of type Gene 2B or Reba with significant discussion because 3 would suggest deep invasion. These are the targets for ESD. Uh, again, here's the line um, of what's possible. There should be another line here for ESD versus EMR. EMR is this side. When is it okay to say after your ESD procedure that the patient is cured? So there's also a lot to pay about this. Of course, it very much depends on the patient. Uh, and it very much depends on the context. But R0 resection is very important to discuss this further. If the, dis if the resection is not complete, then all the everything is off the table. So here we're really talking about R0 resection. That is horizontal, vertical margins negative. So if your horizontal and vertical margins are negative in esophageal squamous cancer, then you should not have histology more advanced than intramucosal M2 cancer, well to moderately differentiate. So M2 is invasion level into the muscularis mucosa with no lymphovascular invasion, and it can be considered low risk. And then as well, you can add to it deep muscularis mucosa invasion or 200, I think, micrometers into the submucosa um, is okay, acceptable, uh, should be considered low risk, but not as low risk as the initial indication. However, they add a proviso here that if this lesion was bigger than 20, it, does that mean the whole thing or does that mean the invasive part? Not specified. There is a real risk of lymph node metastases and complete staging is required. Now, is complete staging equal to, okay, we did staging and it's negative, but still there's a high risk and we should do surgery? Or is that do complete staging and make 100% sure that your staging is negative, also not clear. I think that this is a real gray zone. And if for me, within a few years' time, this gray zone will be erased by circulating tumor DNA and its detection or the presence or absence of it. And we will be able to make these decisions based upon that, rather than the ridiculous thing we do now of, okay, studies in Korea show that, yeah, these features give this risk, okay, it's 15%, patient got to have an esophagectomy or not, what do we do? Talk to the patient, make a decision, someone in the mock shouts louder than someone else in the mock, the decision we make is that decision. We have to get away from that. We must have to be, we have to be scientific, we have to do better, and that doing better is gonna be a blood test probably, that's negative or positive. And if it's negative, we do nothing, and if it's positive, 
I suspect we don't do surgery. I suspect we do chemotherapy. Anyway, that is not for now. Um, and adjuvant chemo, chemo radiotherapy is possible if um, you have M3 or SM1. But I think this is something that is very, very niche. Um, oh. That's not happening currently with us. So you say this following thing to the patient. There is a scoring system for this, right? Ecura is a scoring system for this. Yeah. Here is your risk of lymphoma metastasis based upon the currently available best evidence. Sad you didn't have this cancer in two years' time because then maybe I could have told you black or white whether you still have circulating tumor now over a secondary. But okay, we're not there yet. So we have, you have this risk. Say it's 10%, right? You are 80 years old. Your risk of surgery is this. And this is also very, very easy to determine because there's a lot of data out there to give the numbers to the patients. And my experience is that the patients look at me like I'm crazy. And they say, well, what are you talking about? I don't want surgery. But of course, this is a conversation which I think one must be had with patients because patients are in this discussion. They also need to see a surgeon to understand what going through surgery entails is very important. And then they should make their decision. It is not for us as doctors to, we can advise, of course, we can advise based on evidence, but we cannot push them. Yeah. There's also one important thing surgery will not reduce the risk critical, to zero. Critical. Patients think, okay, I take my curative option. My risk is now zero. That's absolutely right. And it's not. It's not zero. It's not even reduced by, maybe it's reduced by a couple of percent. We don't know really the answer to that. So we must be selected better. We must be better at selecting the patients for, for this. So I think this statement is very, very important, but should not push you in one or other direction. You should really use numbers and, and risks with patients. And eCura is something you don't know about. It's in this, it's in this um, ESG document, but... Uh, we can post to it later. It's a way of stratifying the risk after um, resection of um, stomach and virus, I think.